Lawmakers. This is another project I have for the Whimsy Stamps Halloweeners design team. This project today was completely inspired by the Headless Horseman stamp set from Whimsy Stamps and it is number CWSD234. I will be using quite a few stamps from this stamp set but I wanted to have a backup just in case I needed something else. And so I grabbed the Sleepy Hollow set, which is CWSD233. And I might need one or two words or something like that from this set. And so I wanted to have it on hand just in case I did need it. Now I'm going to stamp these onto one of the wonderful Nevermore uh, papers. Uh, they have just kind of this great kind of dark spooky feeling that goes really well with the Headless Horseman. And I pulled a couple that I might be able to use. There's this wonderful misty dark night uh, that I could probably use. There's this one that has a completely different feeling to it. You don't even see the moon, but you have the trees and things that he could be riding through. Um, I have this one that's just completely misty. And you don't have a moon or, or anything, which is could be great. And then there's this one, which if we cover this up, see this wonderful with the tree and the moon and things like that. And I'm showing you just this corner because I'm not going to need a very big space because I'm going to use, here's the little out of the box uh, design element. I'm going to be using the snow globe for this project and I'm going to put him in the snow globe and then underneath the base of the snow globe I'm going to put something that I hope will work. This is my first time using it but I got a pack of easy lights from Pear Blossom Press and the, this pack of easy lights they have some that just have one light and you just press the button and one light lights up the project but I didn't want to press have someone pressing in the snow globe I would rather have someone pressing on the base and have the headless horseman's head one of these heads light up that's that's the design plan now i'm not sure this is going to happen but this is what i'm shooting for so i got this set this is five different lights so i can make five cards each light has three little light bulbs and i can put them all together i could put them in different places if i wanted and then you can actually because the wires are there you can actually put the little push mechanism down farther so that when you push it, then it will light up somewhere else on the card. So that's why I chose this one instead of this one for this card. So let's see how this works. Couple of uh, firsts for me on this one. So let's try it and see what we end up with. I'm going to begin by taking this apart. And so I have these kind of snips uh, that I had in one of my toolboxes. And I believe these are for snipping little bits of metal. So we're going to give that a shot. This is the Shaker Maker Glitter Glow die that I'm going to use for Halloween. And apparently you can break these apart, but then it leaves a little metal bit and I don't want a little metal bit yeah that worked all right um so I'm just going to go right along the edge there so I don't have any sharp metal left all right so have my dies now I'm going to try and figure out what I want here All right, I did some die cutting. I have two black cardstock bases made from Tim Holtz Ideology Craft Stock. 
and they are a tiny bit bigger than a regular uh, A2. So they are six by four and a half. And I thought that, that kind of gave just some nice space all around it. So I cut this one out with that little bit of um, the gravestone showing through. And I'm hoping that it doesn't really draw too much attention. And then from the side of that same piece, I cut this bottom area. Um, so, yeah. So there's that. Uh, I cut the top out of another corner that had, they both had kind of spider webs. So I thought that was cool. And so this will go on there. Now I cut out of some heavy craft stock, distressed heavy craft stock. I cut two more pieces that I'm hoping will give this a little bit of dimension. So I'm, you know, and have it kind of sit out above the backdrop. And then I cut an extra one of these from the heavy craft stock. So, and I have to look where that goes, if it goes there, if it goes behind it. And then this goes on here. And then same thing for this one. I went ahead and cut both of them and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp both of them and just see what I think. And then from the top of this and the bottom of this one, the bottom of this one had some hay and some pumpkins. And so I used the hay and I cut that out and it kind of goes with this. So I may go ahead and use it on this one. And then from the top up here in the mist was uh, this. And so I haven't decided, but I may just use the plain brown. I cut out of a corner of one of them, cut that, and then another one of these. I think this stamped really well in the black archival ink. And so I am going to go ahead and just leave it and let it dry. Um, and then I need to put the head on there. I really like how that turned out. So I'm going to set that aside, make sure it gets completely dry because it is archival ink. And uh, so it does stay uh, wet a little bit longer. So I'm setting it aside and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this one. This stamping I did with archival ground espresso, which is a very dark brown. And I love the way that turned out with this kind of tan background. So again, I'm setting this aside to let this completely dry before we move on to something else. So I am going to attempt to cut the nose, mouth, and eyes out of one of these and see how it goes. And then I can just put like I did uh, on... Um, Another one of these that I did, I'm going to just put the vellum behind here so I can light up the face. Let's give it a try. I'm not going to lie, that was not easy. So if you're not into like really tedious things and you're afraid you're going to ruin your paper, um, this may not be the way to go and I'm really not sure what to tell you to do. Um, but... I did it. I don't know if you can see it. There a little bit, you can kind of see. So I cut out the eyes, the nose, and the mouth with my uh, craft knife, my Tim Waltz craft knife. It's got a pretty, pretty sharp little tip there. And then I went around it just with this archival ink pen from Pigma. Uh, it's got kind of a brush tip a little bit, and so I used that and went around it. And I also colored in the back so that um, I don't know if the light's going to maybe glow all around it, which probably wouldn't be bad, but I just thought I would color in the back. 
I was getting these ready to glue onto the the cardboard and you may be wondering why well this is actually um craft heavy stock what am I saying cardboard craft heavy stock and the reason I'm doing this is because this is a little bit of a light texture cardstock and I want this to be uh to have some weight to it so that when I put the light under it then um you know it has some substance so I'm going to use on this one because I wanted to have the button over here. So I am using the one with the three lights. And as you can see, they come on little wires and then it comes with the battery separate. So let me get that out so you can see. It's very easy to put it in. I'm not sure how to get it out. So it comes separate and then you look for the little plus sign and then on here there's a little plus sign and so you just match them up and you just push this in and all the way up and then you can see when you push this button the lights light up. All right and then this allows you to so you can have something in several places on the card or whatever. So for me, I cut out a spot so you can kind of see on the back. So I cut around uh, where the face is and I will be taping the lights into place back here behind the face. And then this, and then you tape these behind it. And then this will go over here in this spot so that when you push on it, it's gonna light up. Okay, and I still have to put vellum behind it. So then that's gonna go on here. And then this one, because I stamped that uh, barn or whatever, covered bridge in the corner, I thought I might try the all-in-one so it's got one light and it has the button over here. And it's the same thing with this one. You just, they come separately and you go with the plus and the plus, put that in there and it's good to go. And there's your one little light. And so if you position it just right behind the bridge, you can See, so you can uh, push on the bridge and the light comes on. And so I thought, oh, you know what? That will work for that one. So I'm going to, uh, I'll, what I'll do is I will get it in position and then I'm going to draw around it and I will cut that spot out as well as where the face is so that it can light up and then I can glue this onto the back of here. I've got these and I think I'm going to do a different color for this one. Um, and that one will go there. So next step, I don't want it just on the black. And so then I was looking at putting them on kind of this grayish pumice stone color, but it's just too bland. And then I remembered I was going to stamp this as the background in the snow globe. So I'm going to try stamping it on the cardstock that's going to go behind the snow globe and see how that looks because I thought that might be a, a, a great thing to do. So this is the Whimsy Stamps Tree Silhouette, DA1021, and uh, it's a great rubber stamp. So I think I'm going to do that because if you look, I can fit the background paper just exactly on it and I can stamp it and then we'll see how that looks of maybe kind of ghostly trees silhouetting both of these. So that's what I'm doing next. Okay, I have several pieces of this, and this is actually really old cardstock, and it does have a, that linen texture on one side, but it's flat on the other. So I'm gonna stamp the flat side down. And I'm gonna start off with hickory smoke. And let's just see how this goes. Um, some hickory smoke and then I think a little bit of the black soot kind of thrown in here and there 
So I have several pieces of it. And if the first one doesn't turn out right and I need it darker, I will just go ahead and use one of my extra pieces. No big deal. Okay. So that's Hickory Smoke Archival, smooth side. I'm going to lay it down and I'm gonna go ahead and use this on it because it's nice and flat. All right, let's see how it did. Oh, that's cool, I like it. I think once I ink around it and everything, it'll be perfect. So let's get the those out of the way. And then, if I ink around it, yeah, I like it. I think that's great. As I was finishing up, I thought I would, since I was coloring the outsides of these, I thought I would take a minute and just demonstrate how to get a, a nice blend with the uh, blending tool and the Distress inks. And one of the keys is that you, a slick surface is nice. Um, something that grabs onto it is going to make it a, a little more difficult to, to get a like a smooth blend also you want to start off of the surface and usually you know onto like the glass so that's why I usually do this on the glass mat and then you want to lightly come in in a circular motion you can always build up the color but you can't take it away and so if you put too much on or if you press too hard, you're going to end up with the colors like, um, you know, like this. Okay, so you're going to end up with the harder you press, see how it's not smooth. Whereas if you start off the edge and you go lightly, then as you come in, even if you start in the middle, but you go lightly, you're going to have less of a problem. And I've actually, I probably should get a new one. Um, because I've been using this on the edges and actually I can even show you how to do this with, with the, instead of the domed, just the regular flat blending color, it's the same thing. You want to get, you want to load up with your ink and you want to start off and you want to go lightly and you just keep going in circles Bring in the color in until you get the look that you want. And I want to kind of come up on my corners. So building it up. And again, I'm going to come on my corners. And if I was using more than one color, I would do the same thing. You always want to start off on a slick surface and then build up. You don't want to press down too hard. All right. And so that gave me kind of the dark around the edge. And then I can put this on and it's all nice and dark. I really wanted it to kind of be like it's nighttime because it says be wary of the horseman who be aware the wary of the horseman who rides at night. At this point, I have the backgrounds ready. Now I generally sew on my cards and my layouts when I do scrapbook layouts. I like to sew, and this is going to be no exception. I I just I will not be happy with these no matter what if I don't sew around the edge of this. And I use so a brother sewing machine that I got from Walmart, um, super cheap or inexpensive. Um, if cheap offends you, uh, it was very inexpensive and it, it lasts. The only thing is that you don't want to sew over things like glue dots, uh, foam tape or sticky adhesive, like for layouts, 
and a lot of my paper crafting, I like to use the Tombow Model Multi Glue because it doesn't dry hard. Uh, it dries tacky. And so then I'm able to, if I decide later that I want to change something or move something, I can actually pry whatever piece up and I can move it around. And so I really love this, but I can't put this under where I'm going to sew. So if I'm putting a layout together, I will usually use this and just put it in the center of something and then allow the stitching to hold it down instead of the glue. I just use the glue to kind of tack it in place until I get the sewing done. So you kind of have to plan ahead if you're using something like this or glue dots or even uh, the double stick tape. You don't want to sew over that. It will gum up the, the parts and then you're going to have to get another inexpensive machine sooner than you need to. So that's one thing to keep in mind. The other thing is um, I usually use uh, a needle for like heavier fabrics. And um, that's mainly if I'm going to go through thicker, you know, several like on a layout, if I have several pieces of paper that I'm going to be going through, I might use like a denim needle. If it's just something thin, like this is very thin cardstock, you can usually use just a regular all-purpose size needle. You don't want thin needles. They, uh, they won't work. So that's kind of how I do that. And uh, yeah, and then you just sew. So I would encourage you if you haven't sewn and you would like to start sewing on paper, just to uh, get an inexpensive machine, don't use the one that you, you use for sewing fabric, and then just give it a try, get some scrap paper, and just have a good time just trying out different uh, types of zigzag or straight stitches and things like that on your paper. And then um, when you're ready, you can start sewing on your cards and your layouts too. So All right, I decided to see if I could videotape this for you. So here's my machine, I'm all set up. And I have a uh, dark charcoal, it's almost black uh, thread that is in here. And I usually start off in the middle. Now on my foot, because again, I only use this for sewing on paper. So I can't really see the, <laughs> the way this is set up, if you can see the foot or not. But uh, I took a permanent marker and on the foot I marked kind of uh, where I usually put the edge of my paper so that this center area is where if I'm doing a straight stitch, stitch it shows me where my stitch is going to go. Um, and so sometimes I rely on that. Sometimes I just uh, eyeball it. But a lot of times with Halloween makes, I just don't pay attention to any of that and I just sew crazy because it kind of goes with the whole feel of Halloween. I don't want my stitching straight. On my pretty cards, uh, I will make sure that they're straight, but for this, I just sew crazy. So let me show you how we do this. So I am set on just a regular straight stitch. And here we go. So see, I don't even worry about if it's, uh, you know, in a straight line or not. Part of the fun. You would go much slower if you were trying to make this really nice stitching. I might try and do nice stitching on the brown one just. Sometimes on the Halloween ones, I'll get all messed up. Uh, you know, the sometimes the machine's messed up and the thread gets pulled, and I'll just leave it. Okay, so I'm feeling like two's okay on this one. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to pull this out and I'm just going to trim it, and then I'm going to go around and just do a couple of zigzag stitches. So I have it on a uh, zigzag comes in uh, wide and then it also comes in how far apart the zigzags are. And so I have this on kind of a medium. 
uh, area. And so it's kind of going here. So I think I'm going to do one here. And when I do the zigzags, I'm just like, sometimes I go back and forth. See how it's just super messy. Uh, and then I think I want to do one over here. Do one more up here. Okay. Now So all I do is just trim roughly. I don't really care that there's little hangy bits. And again, this is for the Halloween, my Halloween makes. I do the messy stitching and don't care about how things stick out because it gives it character, all right? So that is messy Halloween stitching and it just gives it a little bit of character and then I just adhere it down and you don't worry about any of the little loose threads that are kind of all over the place but it just gave it just a little something else all right so I am switching to the dark brown and I have a bobbin that is kind of a lighter brown than the brown that I'm using. It really won't matter. They're both brown and I actually could have left the charcoal gray one in, but just in case some of it pulls through or in case I get uh, one of those, you know, thread tangles, I wanted them both to be brown. So you put it in and then you follow the little diagram and mine is a self threading so I don't have to uh, in the back in the day you used to have to kind of pull that thread up yourself but these are all self threading these days so you just get the bobbin wound around there and then I have it run through the machine and again follow all the little numbers and all of the little things that tell you where to go in the directions and then if you want and you're just starting out oftentimes it's good to take a little scrap of paper and so here's a little scrap that I have and get it started. And I am going to switch the zigzag off. And so when you switch the zigzag off, you have to make sure that your needle is up and it's not in the paper because the needle's going to move to the center. And so you want to be sure that you're in the center there. Okay. All right. So now... It's a good thing I started because as I'm looking, now you can check and see. Do you see how when I first started stitching, it was really kind of super tiny? The stitches were really, really tiny, and then they got a little wider. So I'm going to go ahead and switch it one over. And that's wider, so that's about a nine on my machine, and I kind of like that, so I'm going to go with the wider. Okay, so again, like I said, I start usually on the side, even if I'm doing a straight one. So, like I told you, with a straight one, I will usually uh, line it up with the red. You 
notice when I'm turning my paper, just like with fabric, I make sure my needle is down when I turn. started, you want to kind of look carefully and see if you can get your needle lined up to go right down in the hole where you started. And there we go. I think I went over a couple, but that's all right. Let me move this back a little bit. Okay. So now you can see I did a straight stitch and what I want to do is I want this thread to be on the back side because if I'm doing a clean stitch, I don't necessarily want. And see, it's not perfect. And that's still okay. This is handmade. It's not made by a machine and even machines aren't perfect. So don't worry if it's not perfect stitching. This is a handmade thing that you're giving to someone and it's wonderful. All right. <clears throat> So there you go, I pulled it onto the back side. And what I usually do, you can tape this, you can do whatever you want, is uh, you can stick a little double-sided tape if you want. And then trim it. And that will hold it into place and keep it from unraveling and you can stick that on the card when you're done. But that is a clean stitch, and that just adds just that little bit of stitching. So we have the stitching kind of around there, and this adds a little bit more detail to the background of the card. So here's our two different styles of stitching on cards. I took some of my mini archivals and used crackling campfire on this end. You can see it's darker. On this end, I used spiced marmalade. In the middle, it's a little mixture of both of them. So I don't know if you can see the difference in the three colors, but this is a much darker, deeper ember color, uh, whereas this is more of a pumpkin-y color and a little warmer. So I put them on to see which one was going to work best. And the three are already kind of yellow as it is. And with the, the green, I felt like the spiced marmalade was a better match. And then when I did this one with this brighter, um, the red was actually a little bit better than the yellow on this one for this. So let's get started assembling. I'm not gonna talk through this as much uh, as I am gonna just speed it up and let you watch. And hopefully uh, as I work, it will answer the questions for you. So let's get going. Thank you. 
Bowl Makers, that ended up being a little bit longer tutorial than I had intended. I hope that you found some of the little side tutorials helpful, like blending ink uh, and the surface to do that on and how to do it, as well as how to sew around your cards with the sewing machine. Um, and just, I have these out here just as a reminder that I use the Shaker Maker Glitter Globe die from Whimsy Stamps. I use the sil Tree Silhouette stamp from Whimsy. Our main focus stamp was the Headless Horseman with the, not only the silhouette and the pumpkin, but also the sentiments. And then the little bats were from the Build a Graveyard. I added those at the last minute. Um... And then the paper that made both of these feel so very different is from the Nevermore paper pack, also from Whimsy Stamps. So I have links to all of these products on my blog, as well as uh, there is an affiliate affiliate link in the description for this video. Uh, if you'd like, if you'd like to see some of the things before and you want to click on those, they are at the bottom of the blog post on my blog. Which, by the way, if in this very long tutorial. If I missed something or I went over something and uh, it didn't make any sense and you need some clarification, please contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com and I will be very happy to answer any questions or clarify anything for you. There's a contact button over at the in the right hand column and you can email me that way. And I had, just have to say, I had a lot of fun making a light-up card. This was one of my first, and it was just really much more fun than I even anticipated. And I'm just so pleased with it. An encouragement that if you don't want to go to the trouble of lighting it up, I think it looked absolutely fabulous with the paper and the dies and the stamps and everything like that. Just stamping the pumpkin head on there and leaving it as it was and not even lighting it up. It looks absolutely wonderful that way too. But I mean, how fun, right? So I hope that um, you found something in this tutorial that was uh encouraging or inspiring or that you learned that you can put to work with your makes. And with that, I want to wish you a very crafty day.